we have been talking about how we are anointed. We are anointed. And uh, that, that seems like a super big spiritual word, but I promise you this morning, it's not as scary or as ununderstandable as what um, you would maybe think it is. And maybe this morning you don't even believe it's true that you are anointed, but it is true. There is an anointing upon your life. Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22, now it is God who makes both of us, you and I, to stand firm in Christ. He has anointed us. He has set his seal of ownership upon us. He has put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus, if you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you have believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, if, if you pick up your cross daily and you follow him, there is a supernatural partnership between you and God. Yeah. A partnership that consecrates and dedicates us to live a powerfully and productive life for him. That is anointing. The supernatural partnership between you and God. In the, in the Old Testament, yeah, it, it, was a, it, it was this special club for certain people, absolutely. It was priests and high priests that were anointed and only them. It was kings and prophets that were anointed and only them. But now in the age of the church, you are, we are all anointed. Thus far, we've looked at several different aspects of anointing in our lives. We've looked at how we're anointed for his pleasure. Uh, we, we've seen how we are anointed to grow. Uh, we're anointed for purpose, for purpose. Uh, last week, we examined we're anointed for breakthrough. And this morning, uh, we're gonna see how we are anointed to thrive. To thrive. I want you to just think about that for just a moment. Just, just think about what it is you know about that word thrive, what it means to you. And then when I say the words, you are anointed to thrive, do you believe it? Do you receive it? Do, do, you, do you accept it for your life? Let's pray for the word today. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help me to relay what you placed in my heart today what thriving truly means. Lord Jesus, help your people to receive it. Help us to be changed by it. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. So when this whole series was first being kind of outlined and I was all these little different topics, I got my notepad and my phone and had this long list of topics I was feeling like to discover. This week was initially called You Are Anointed to Survive. You're anointed to survive. And my hope for such a message would be that it would be one that would encourage you if you are facing insurmountable circumstances or struggle in your life, that those circumstances and things, they, they do not represent the end of your life. And as the weeks progressed, that kind of shifted into what we were looking at last week. And a thought came into my mind that just would not leave and as it pertains to how he feels regarding his intentions for your life. And it's this, it's that it's not enough for him to just ensure that you wake up clinically alive and breathing every single day. Uh, it's not enough for him to ensure that you just get through the light and momentary struggles that you might be facing. When it comes to your walk with Jesus, survival is the bare minimum. Wow. It's the bare minimum. Jesus himself said this in John chapter 10, verse 10. I know we look at this verse a lot, but there's no other verse really to go to. It, just, it, it pertains so mightily when our walk with Jesus. It says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy <laughs> the devil Lucifer, Satan, whatever it is that you refer to him as, he is not for you. He hates you. He wants you taken out. Other verses describe him as a roaming lion, a, a roaring lion, looking and walking around for someone to devour. 
the, the natural struggle that we face, it's not against our flesh and blood. It is a supernatural war that he wages in our life. The enemy of your soul is seeking the destruction of your soul. But that's not all Jesus says. Jesus continues, but I have come that they may have life. Jesus says you're going to pull through. You're going to make it. You're you're going to survive. He says that the daily grind, the thing that you call that your life, it is not going to take you out which sounds amazing, right? I mean, that, that, sounds good, like, that, that sounds like a good plan to me. I don't want to be taken out. I, I don't want that struggle to be limiting what it is that he has for me. But for the believer, survival is the bare minimum because Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. If all that you're looking for in your daily walk with Jesus is to narrowly pull out of the nosedive that you call life just to ascend high enough back to a certain point that you can do it all over again, then you're missing out. You're missing out. You're missing out on taking advantage of what being a follower of Jesus means for you because he has partnered with you so that you can survive and so that you can live life-giving, fulfilling, enjoyable, overflowing, abundant life. You are anointed to thrive. You are. The dictionary says that when you thrive, you're you're growing vigorously. You're you're flourishing. You're you're gaining wealth or possessions. You, You prosper. Uh, because of or despite your current circumstances at your end, you progress forwards towards a realized goal. When we think of thriving and we think of it in the medical world, if you think of it as the opposite, they call it a failure to thrive. And a failure to thrive, that means that there has been a failure to develop or to grow naturally. In your walk with Jesus, a failure to thrive means that there has been a failure to receive from him what is meant for you. And so to reverse the failure to thrive, we need to have a perspective shift. That's the first thing I wanna talk to you about this morning. We, We need to have a perspective shift. Many of us here in this place today, we have a perspective that surviving, it is enough. That it is enough. However, what you need to not just hear this morning, but what you actually need to believe is true this morning is that God wants to see you flourish. Oh, he wants to see you flourish. God wants and desires to see you to grow mighty and to grow strong. Like we talked about a few weeks ago in in that message, the process and the product. And we talked about the cedars of Lebanon that are in constant growth and are producing fruit even in their old age. Reaching the pinnacle of his purpose for our lives by becoming who he wants me to be and by doing what he has created me to do. We need a perspective shift in our lives. You you are someone God wants to bless. You are. Look at your neighbor, tell him God wants to bless you. God God wants to bless you. Don't now, when, when you hear that, don't hear the words and think that, oh, God wants me to be loaded. All that, I mean. Yeah, that, that's wonderful to think and to hear, but man, if it doesn't happen, then you run the risk of not believing that his word is true. Right. And now the, money, the acquisition of money and property, it's an aspect of blessing, but it's a small aspect. Right. Oh, it's such a small aspect. And if you've been blessed by this manner and in this matter, oh, thank God for it. Praise God for it. But if you don't have money as what the general definition of what we think of money as, don't think that he's forsaken or forgotten his promise upon your life because you can be living paycheck to paycheck. You, you can be heaped in financial debt. You can be labeled not middle class, not even poor. You can be labeled poverty stricken by our 
national standards and still be all of this and be considered blessed by God. This morning, I want to tell you that if you see blessed being thriving, being fulfilled in life from only a financial standpoint and nothing less than complete financial security, then you are shortchanging the anointing that is to thrive that is upon your life. Well, we need a perspective shift. God wants to bless you. He also wants you to be successful. God wants you to be successful. Tell your neighbor, he wants you to be successful. It wasn't as loud this time because I don't think half of you believe that today. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to succeed. And even if we succeed by God's standards and fail to meet the threshold of the earthly standards of success and only kind of meet that heavenly standard that God desires that I receive, it's still the greatest success that you can ever be able to have upon your life to be able to experience the words of Jesus when you cross the threshold of heaven to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's a standard of success that I'll take upon my life any day. But God wants you to be successful. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to succeed. We need a perspective shift. I'm someone that God wants to thrive. That's today's message right here. We are anointed to thrive. There is a supernatural partnership upon our lives that that anointing, it ensures that our lives as believers are fulfilled and fruitful, that they are thriving. And with any kind of shift in our thought and our processes of thinking, there always becomes a change of definition as well. And so what it means to thrive, when we shift our thinking, it gets redefined. And what is, isn't limited to, to, to just me being all at well and all at peace. And that means that when, when the, 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 that nothing bad ever happens to me mindset goes out the window and I start to realize that I can still be blessed I can still succeed. I can still thrive. Even when my family is going through the valley of the shadow of death, even when I have no hope for what it is that I'm going through right now, even when all of these things are going on my plate, I can thrive. Maybe you feel surrounded today. Circumstances that appear anything less by success and blessing. Circumstances that feel more like death and life. If it looks like physical death upon you or someone you love, if, if it looks like death upon of your dream, if it looks like death of your hopes and your expectations, I mean, it may look like death is right outside of your door this morning, but that doesn't mean that abundant life isn't in your heart today because our perspective shifts the world around you. You can see it as dying, but the life in you is thriving simultaneously. All to know it and experience it, those are two completely different things. And dare I say, it's even easier said than done. So this morning, I want to let you know that to thrive in a dying world, you also have to believe that the answer lies upward. Believe the answer lies upward. That's the second thing today. We all have our ideas and our plans for what makes life worthwhile. We, we all have our, what we believe will make life fulfilling, well, what life makes life abundant. If just these things, A, B, C, and D, would actually happen, then life would be perfect. And it's not that all of those ideas and plans are inappropriate or wrong. Much of what we define as fulfilling is genuine fulfillment from God. It, it truly is. There are things that he blesses us with that are fulfilling, but when you believe the key to a fulfilling life lies upward, it won't matter what is actually in your life or what's missing from your life because you believe the answer lies not in what you see in front of you, but what you see above you. The psalmist says in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. 
Everything you need is from above. The happiness that you long for is from above. The peace that you need is from above. The hope for tomorrow is from above. All that makes life worth it, it is from above. And there may be still things that we need, tangible things that we seek. We, 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 we seek for his provision. We, we seek for his healing. We seek for his help. We seek for his direction. There are tangible, legitimate things that I'm seeking heaven for because I need a lot. Oh, I, I need a lot in my life, and I know you need a lot in your life too. But even though we need many things, Jesus, he supersedes them all. Jesus, he supersedes them all. When we live in our anointing to thrive, we live in the truth that Jesus is enough. You will live in the truth that Jesus is enough. Those tangible requests, whether the answer comes or the answer remains elusive, Jesus is enough. We live in the fulfillment that Jesus is more than we deserve and everything that we need. What, what a statement right there. Jesus is more than we deserve and he is everything that we need. Oh, and all that is wrong in my life and all that is not okay in my life, I know I can thrive. Jesus has come, not that I have life, not that I survive, but that I have it to the full. So I keep my eyes on him. I keep looking upward, believing the answer is in heaven. I keep uh, believing in the one that is writing and perfecting my faith, the one that is making my life better. I do as Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, I overcome by the blood of his lamb and the word of my testimony. I realize something, I replace that word, word, with the word power in the way I memorized the verse. And so this week I was looking for the translation like that said they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the power of their testimony. And I realized that there is no translation that said that because I replaced that word, word, with the word pow or power, which for me itself, I feel I'm okay with because you know why? There is power in your testimony. The word that you speak over your life, there is power in that. Oh, I have to remind myself, I have to testify to myself of how great and how fulfilling the answers of heaven really are. I have to remind myself the power of my testimony, of all he did for me yesterday and how he came through then and how the answer from heaven means that he's gonna come through now. Oh, I testify of my faith and my hope. He is the answer that I need, the answer that is from heaven the answer that lies upward. When I keep my eye lifted to heaven, when I keep my eyes focused upward, I can do as I'm supposed to do here on earth, then I can look outward on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, that's number three this morning. I can look outward on a regular basis. I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer, probably because I experienced this in my own life, that the most fulfilling parts of life are the parts that go in line with his plan for my life when I'm outside the scope of his will and what he's asked me to do, life is empty, life is lacking, life I'm, is, is aimless. When, when I'm inside the scope of what he has asked me and called me to do, the scope of his will, li life is thriving. As believers, we're meant to have an outward focus. First Corinthians chapter 10 says, no one should seek their own good, but the good of others. It's not that what I need doesn't matter to God. It's not that he doesn't desire to care for me. Oh, he desires to care for you. It's that when I take care of what matters to God, when I take care of his priorities, when I take care of his kingdom, when I seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, then what? Everything else, say everything else with me. Everything else is added to to it. He finds a special, careful way to take care of me. So we look for ways to be obedient to his expectations. We, we look for ways to be obedient to those uh, that are around us that need our obedience in their lives to make a difference for their lives. And it's not like it's slim pickings out there. 
although there's plenty out there. Jesus said in John chapter four, verse 35, I tell you, open your eyes and look, the fields, they are ripe with harvest. They're, they're ripe with harvest. This is a, a verse of abundance right there. We're talking about abundant living, abundant life, life for full, to the full. This is a verse of abundance. The fields are ripe with harvest. There's plenty out there to do. There's plenty to reap into your life when you have an outward focus of what it is that is around you. When we're looking outward consistently, he opens doors and allows us to live our lives in thriving and fulfilling purpose. So make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of the opportunity that you have, even now when you're in church. When, you, when you're looking around and you see the brothers and sisters that, that are with you every single week, or maybe you see them more than once a week, you see them if you come on Wednesday or you're here for prayer, you, you're here for different events if you stop by. See those that you always see and normally see here at Crossroads. Try to see them in a different way. Try to see the need that is in their life. Try to see the struggle that's in their life. And Galatians, I mean, Galatians 6 2 says, carry each other's burdens. Yes. And in that way, you fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of the opportunity when, you, when, when you're out and about this afternoon, when, when you're out to lunch this afternoon. When, 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 when you're at the grocery store this afternoon, it, it never fails. If I, if I go to the grocery store on a Sunday afternoon, when I say the grocery store, I say Walmart. I confess before you, yes, I do go into the valley sometimes on, on, <laughs> on, on, on the day of victory. I, I, I do. And it, it never fails. I, 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 I know I'm not alone because you know why? I either see Naomi Wheeler or Jose Martinez. So I know some of you, you, you're in that grocery store. You're in that place. I, I, I know some of you, you go on your afternoon walk while you do it on a Sunday afternoon. I don't know, but you go on that afternoon walk. When you're out and about, ask God to see those that are around you like he sees them. Yeah. I'll seriously pray. Oh, Lord, help me to see their struggle like you do. Oh, Jesus, help me to see their pain like you do. Help me to see the need that's in their life like you do. Help me to see their soul like you do. Make the most of every opportunity that you're gonna have this week. You're gonna have opportunity this week. You, you, it might be while you're at work this week. It, it, it might be while you're in the waiting room this week. It, it, it may be when you're at a neighborhood event this week. You'll have the opportunity to be Jesus to someone who needs to see Jesus. Yeah. The fields, they're ripe. They're ripe with the harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are food. So few, so be determined to be that laborer in a plentiful harvest. <laughs> Keep your focus outward and your life, it, it, it's not gonna be perfect. You know your life isn't gonna be perfect. I know your life isn't gonna be perfect, but I promise it will be full. It will be full, and not just because you're busy, but because you're living in fulfillment and in abundance and in thriving. And when what God matters to God matters to you, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna receive inwardly what is from above. That's the final piece this morning. You're gonna release inwardly what is from above. We started out looking at where and who we look at and where we look, who we look to place our trust. As we finish up this morning, let's look in what happens through that act. This point is about provision, but not necessarily provision as you think it today. God loves his creation and he graciously and generously provides. I wanna talk about two ways he provides. The first of all, it says this in Ephesians chapter four, verse seven, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Now this word grace that's in this letter here, this isn't saving grace that's being talked about. 
that this is grace referred to here most likely and probably means the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, upon our hearts, so that we will be able to have our ability impacted to be worthy of the life that he has called us to. Because in Ephesians chapter four, verse one, he starts out saying, make sure that you live a life worthy of the calling so that we are able to actually succeed in that. It says that there has been grace that has been given as Christ has apportioned it. You know what that is? That, that means it's grace that you display. That, that's grace that you display when people drive you crazy. And you might be good at holding your tongue when people drive you crazy, but your face says otherwise. <laughs> And maybe your face needs a little bit of grace. And grace, he, he provides that grace so that your face doesn't say something that your tongue is trying to hold back. This is grace we give. This is the grace we give after we've been wrong. We have every right to retaliate, but we move forward from the hurt. This is the grace that we live in when we could be bitter, when we could be angry, when we could be holding on to unforgiveness. He apportions grace within you so that grace can work through you. And when grace works through you, it is thriving. It is fulfilling. Oh, when we need more than grace, though he also abundantly pours out everything that we need. Look also at Philippians 4, 19. It says, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. We receive inwardly exactly what we need when we need it. Oh, he provides the fruit of the spirit. Our challenges may be different from one another, but the truth is for us all that life is hard. And when life is hard, he allows us to operate in the fruit of the spirit that is working in us so we're able to live in thriving peace. We're, we're able to live in thriving patience. We are able to live in thriving self-control. We're able to live in thriving faithfulness. We're able to live in thriving goodness. We live in thriving qualities of his spirit that will keep us in the game keep us from throwing in the towel. We're, we're able to live in thriving love. We're able to live in thriving joy. We're able to live in thriving kindness. We're able to live in thriving kindness. We live in thriving qualities that keep our witness intact because nothing's worse than saying one thing and then allowing the action of a moment to ruin the witness that I just tried to do. And so he allows the fruit of the Spirit to work inwardly in my life so that his grace can work through my life. It keeps us effective. It keeps us effective. Life to the full this morning, we receive inwardly exactly what we need from above. When I'm empty, he fills me up. When I'm tired, he revives. When I'm ready to give up, he reminds me of who I am. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm anxious, he is faithful. He does all of this so that we can thrive. There was another verse I was thinking about this week. And this was almost our main text this morning. I was this close to using this verse right here. And then the Lord took the message in this direction. But Psalms chapter 37, verses 18 and 19, look at it with me. It says, the blameless spend their days under the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. That sounds an awful lot like thriving to me. But there's a word in that. Did you see the word? And you maybe saw that word blameless and think that suddenly that removes you from what it is that Jesus said you can live in. The word blameless is not an insurmountable declaration or threshold. It's not a must be this high to ride sign at an amusement park. And the thriving that Jesus wants you to live in and to experience 
is available to you because of Jesus in your life. The abundant, full, thriving life the psalmist is speaking about is available for you to live in because Jesus, who is blameless, is in you. Maybe you feel anything but blameless this week. That's the accuser. That's the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So this morning, I challenge you, don't listen to the voice of the accuser. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy today. Whose voice are you going to listen to? Whose word are you going to believe? Oh, we're going to believe the report of the Lord. Because the sin that was upon your life, he bore. And now you are blameless. Christ's righteousness is now your righteousness. And you are righteous. You have been justified with Christ. You are just. You have every right to his care in your life. You have every right to an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. You have every right to flourish. You have every right to his provision. And you have every right not to survive. You have the right to thrive. That's the title this morning. I always say it at the beginning. I thought I'd put it at the end this morning. You have the right to thrive. And not just the one day that we might be with Jesus, whenever that day will be, but you have the right to thrive today, tomorrow, and every day this week. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me this morning? Perhaps there are those in this room today, you've heard about Jesus. You've heard pastors and preachers and different church services talk about Jesus, but you've never made a firm commitment to follow Jesus. Let me tell you this morning, God loves you way too much for to let this moment just pass by without an opportunity for you to be able to make a change in your life. Jesus loves you way too much to have taken the sin that is upon your life to bear it himself, to take the punishment that you deserve upon his life and in his body and the death that you should experience. He loved you way too much to let you go through all of that, so he did it all himself. We call that the good news. And it is good news. And the great thing about the gospel is is that it it, it, it forfeits and it, it voids out the bad news about myself, and that's this, is that I am not all that and that I am a sinner in need of a savior. This morning, if you need Jesus in your life, no one's going to call you out. No one's going to embarrass you today. But I am going to ask that you would acknowledge that need and that you would lift your hand. There's hands in this room today. There's hands in this room today. Let's pray this prayer corporately together. Let's pray it corporately. Say this with me today. Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. That he lived a perfect life, died my sinner's death, and was raised to life. And now I can live because you live. I confess my sin. I turn from my wicked way. I will try to follow you the best I can the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the Bible says that when we pray prayers like that, that the old is gone, the new has come, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. 
And there's a lot of things that need to transpire now. If you prayed that prayer and prayed it for the first time, there's a lot of things that need to transpire. One of the things is, 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 is you should be in church regularly. You need to be in church regularly. And I challenge you to, to make that commitment to be in church regularly. You need to tell people what it is that, that happened in your life. You need to mark it on that little welcome card today that today I decided to follow Jesus. And you need to let us know but you need to also begin to believe these truths that God wants to bless you. God wants you to succeed and that even though you might go through struggle, even though you might go through hardship, thriving ultimately is a choice and it's a mindset that I'm going to live in a fulfilled, abundant, full life. I'm not going to allow the enemy, the the thief to steal, kill, and destroy me, but I'm going to walk in the fullness that Christ has allowed for me. It's a choice. And so this morning, if you need to make that choice, maybe it's been a while since you've made that choice to thrive. It is your right. We're going to close our time together and we're going to sing a a song. And it's talking about, it talks about death. And it talks about how death is no longer valid in our lives. Because you can thrive. Stand with me this morning. Stand with me today. If you need to come and you need to seek God at the altar for a little bit of time here, I invite you to do so. If you need to come and be anointed with oil for some sort of prayer or some, something that's going on in your life, I invite you to do so. I'd be honored to pray with you. But I challenge you this morning and I implore of you this morning, do not leave this place today until you have changed the way you are looking. You need to shift your perspective this morning. And if you have not been looking upward or outward to be able to receive inward this morning, you need to shift your perspective. Change your perspective death has been arrested. There is life. There is victory. Let me pray for you this morning. Jesus, I pray for your people today. I pray for those that feel that there has been nothing but death within their lives. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you will help them to experience and to choose fulfilled, abundant, overflowing, joyful life, because that is what you have allowed us to have. That's the right you have given us to have, the right to thrive. Lord, help us to shift our perspective. Help us to look upward from where our help comes from. Help us to look outward to what it is you've called us to do and help us to receive inwardly what it is you have for us. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people today, that you would keep them, make your face shine upon them, be gracious to them, Turn your face upon them and grant them peace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.